Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I'm going to read it again. He says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from being in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated. This is part three in the three-part series entitled Divine Refreshing. Divine Refreshing. I want you to know that with rebound comes refreshing. We've been declaring that, that we're in a season of rebound. With your bounce back, in other words, we're saying comes refreshing. I want you to look at this scripture verse because we want to go somewhere today and I really want you to see what God is doing, is planning for your life. The Amplified Version says this. He says, so repent. There it says to change your mind and purpose. He goes on to say, be converted. That means to turn around and return to God. You see that? He says, repent, which means to change your mind and purpose. But then he also says, I need you to be converted, which means to turn around and return to God. So initially, I want to focus on the phrase, repent and return. This is an apostolic exhortation given by the Apostle Peter. He is admonishing the believer not by a declamation or speech, but with this warning, with this persuasion, with this strong incitement, he is telling them that they need to repent. In other words, he says that they need some R and R. But he's not talking about rest and recreation. But he's referring to rest or repentance and returning. And the reason why he says this here in this chapter is because he declares that the saints here in the early church, like the Jews, had put Jesus Christ to death. In other words, he was saying that every sin, in essence of it, is killing God. Every time we disobey God, we put God out of his throne figuratively and disown the authority which belongs to his Godhead. Every sin, in essence of it, is a killing of God. And so then he says repentance because that is to lead the sins which we loved before to have a heartfelt change of mind about sin but then to come into an agreement with God about the ugliness of our sin. See, sometimes we fail to come into an agreement about the ugliness of the sin that we commit. Because if we did, we would not continue to commit that sin. And so then we have a change of mind, but we don't have a hatred for the sin. And so then that word repentance comes from the Greek word metotonia, which means after mind, as in afterthought or change of mind. It means to think differently about sin, but to also think differently about yourself and God. It means to have a reorientation of your perspective. I want you to understand that repentance, in as much as it's a choice, Miss Cynthia, it is a gift as well. Watch this. Because sometimes we take the, the opportunity to repent as much as it is a choice and not realize that God didn't have to provide the means for us to repent. God could take us out with our sin. Show up every day because if they 
repenting because I understand that I've made a mistake. I'm repenting because I want to do better the next time. But I must also understand that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have an opportunity to repent. And so then we must realize that when you have an opportunity to repent, you must take advantage of it. would not be available to us at all times. Because even though it's a choice, there are times when that repentance is not made available because our hearts have become hard. It is because God realizes that your words have become meaningless. Oh, I wish I had some real folk in the house. When, when you said you weren't going to do it no more. And you did it again. Look at your neighbor and neighbor. I did it again. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at your other neighbor because they need to understand they not by them saying the neighbor. I, I did it again. Uh, to tell you the truth, I did it so many times I lost. Uh, maybe that's not y'all. Y'all been in the church longer than I have. But there was times when I messed up so much that God stopped hearing me because he realized, Ben, you're lying. You're lying. You're lying. Ain't no truth in what you're saying. Because as soon as the dust settles, you're going to go right back. Uh -huh. I wish I had some real folk in the house. As soon, as soon, as soon as they turn it back, you're going to go right back out. As soon as you, you get your breakthrough, you're going to go right back. As soon as, as your mind changes, you're going to go right back. Yeah. And so then we must realize that repentance is a charge, yeah. but it is a gift from God. Let me prove it to you. Look at the book of Romans, the second chapter, verse 4. Listen what he said. He says, For despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance, in other words, tolerance, and long suffering patience, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? In other words, he was saying, Don't you know that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? Let me really help somebody in this house. Uh, well, maybe y'all probably wouldn't understand this, but uh, have you ever been in sin and God still bless you? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a real saints in the house. <laughs> have you ever been doing something you ain't have no business and God still make a way? Yeah. Oh, I wish I just had some real folk to say that's been me. Huh?
what? Why am I laying down with dogs and getting on the flee? When he's called me to be a king and a priest. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so then, this is why he asked the question, are you unmindful of this? Do you not know? And so, make no mistake, to repent is inclusive of changing your mind and purpose. But it starts with the recall. Mm -hmm. it, it starts with the looking back it starts with the discovery because if I'm going to repent I have to discover what was I doing wrong are y'all hearing what I'm saying and so then there are times when you have to flip through your mental roller decks and go under S and under S behind the S card you will see a of your sins. Oh my, oh my God. And when you go through it and you look behind that S, you realize that mm, I need to take this card out because that's not befitting of who I am. Yeah. I wish I had somebody in the house. Because I need to discover not only what I've done in violation to the word of God, but I must also discover the ethos, the ethos of what I'm doing. Neighbor said, neighbor, I got to figure out what made me do it. Because the truth of the matter, the devil didn't make me do it. In fact, if I listen to the devil, I might well have done it as much. Oh my God. I did it as much because that's what I wanted to do. And so this is why when the repentance comes, I must understand, I must discover my predilection, my predisposition. Discover my prejudices uh, that caused me to sin. I, I must look at labor to my inclinations uh, as well as my inconsistencies uh, because this is what made me sin. Uh, I must discover what is my proclivities and my propensities uh, for the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, because if I do not, then I cannot combat them with the word of God. See, some people are saying I'm sorry, but you're not repenting. Uh, we've got to first look back. And so the scripture says that your sins may be blotted out. But that word sins right there comes from the Greek word hamartia. Watch. And that means missing the mark. Missing the mark. That means to wander, to stray from the word of God. When I sin, I stray from the path of righteousness. When, when I sin, I stray from the counsel, from the governance that I'm walking by. When I sin, I'm walking in disobedience. And so then he says that your sins may be blotted out because I've been missing the mark. Because I've been missing what God has told me to do with consistency. Yes, yes. That's why the Bible says all have Sin. Look at your name and say, that's all of us. I know you dress nice today, but that's including you too. I know I'm preaching better than you shout, and that includes me too. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk back to me in this place. And so then let me help you understand why or how sin, why he says to blot out. It is because sin will stain you. Oh, Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Look at Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, verse 1. Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, verse 1. It says, Dead flies cause the anointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking. Woo! My God. Send forth a stinking 
savor. This is what he said. He says, as dead flies give perfume a bad smell, mm -hmm. so does a little sin. Right. Not a lot now, just a little bit. Will cause the perfume to spoil. Because sin is like a dead fly. This is, this is Solomon saying this. He says sin is like a dead fly. It's not only light, but it's hurtful and pernicious. In other words, it's deadly. And what may seem little or peccadillo, in other words, something that seems or is a single act, will cause you to stink. See, sometimes we begin to measure and start looking at the quantity and think because the quantity is minute, then it must not be that much. But here he says that the dead flies will cause you to stink. Uh, it reminds me, some of you older people may not have seen this, but some of you young folks, Y'all remember the movie Justice League? Remember that? And in the movie, CJ, you saw that there were some creatures in the movie. And Pastor Mac, in the movie, when fear would show up, it would draw those creatures. Y'all remember that? And toward the end of the movie, you hear Aquaman say this. He said, do you smell that? He said, I smell fear. And all of a sudden, those creatures started coming to the individual who gave off the smell. Like y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is why I want you to understand, I don't care how much Versace you put on. I don't care how much Lavella B that you put on. I don't care how much Gucci that you wear. You can't call up the stench yeah. of sin. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, I guess we had somebody in the house. He said, what are you saying, man of God? Is that repentance and returning to God signifies that I'm clean. Yes. But because of my line, it left the old steel. I know you done repented from it, but you still smell like it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I, I, A stain. My worry will leave a stain. My, my fear, my doubt will leave a stain. My, my lust, my controlling ways will, will leave a stain. My unforgiveness, my drinking, my inconsistency will leave a stain. So 